And then he said, how interruptible are you? And I'm a planner. I'm a I'm a get it done. And and some of it is personality and some of it is gifting and some of it has been sin because when I was growing up, my I, I kind of balanced my worth and my work. I thought if I'm not productive, God has already lowered the bar to let me into the kingdom. And so I've got to just keep my head down and be a good girl. Um I could I could talk about grace, but I just I really didn't think God liked me very much. But when this professor said that, I thought, oh, my goodness, here I am in my late 50s. By the grace of God, I get to talk about Jesus for a living. I I think I'm running too fast. (laughs) I thought, I think I'm just racing right past miracles. Hi, friends. Come on in. It is time to talk it out. And you are going to not like this when we start, but at the end, you are going to love it because we're talking about being interrupted, which nobody loves the idea of, but there are great things that can happen from being interrupted. Mm -hmm. Joyce is going to tell us about it. Aaron Cluley is going to tell us about it. And special guest who we love oh, having, oh, Lisa Harper, is here with us. Me. Thank you all so much Thank for letting you. me come back. We love having you. I love it. I'll just keep blowing up your phone until you let yeah. me come back. <laughs> Done. <laughs> That'll be an interruption at very, very inopportune times, I'm sure. So let, let's talk a little bit about what things bother you about being interrupted. Because the idea of being interrupted does not sound so great. Mm-mm. I am better if God interrupts me than I am if people do. I, mm-hmm. I don't know why, but I guess, you know, I've just settled in my heart that <laughs> God is going to yeah. interrupt us. You know, the Bible tells us that we are to be ready in season right. or out of season. Right, the right. Amplified says whether it's convenient or inconvenient. Right. And so if you're <laughs> going to hang with God and walk in His will, you're going to have to—it's good to have a plan— Mm-hmm. I really believe in having a plan, mm-hmm. but we have to submit that plan to God every day right. and say, if you right. want me to do something else, right. I will. Yeah. And I don't even mind people interrupting me if it's not for something silly mm-hmm. and ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You know, like... Uh-oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> I know. I was going to say, I hope she doesn't say something I've done. <laughs> no. Let us know what those things are. Right. None, none of you have ever done that, oh, that's but... Good. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing a lot of serious stuff, at least it's serious to me. You know, when I like for example, if I'm writing a book, right. You know, you 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 really get you get into it, you get like lost in it. And so sometimes Dave will come and say, Let me read you this. And I'm like, Dave <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing. Because if somebody pulls you out of that, yeah. mm-hmm. then it takes you a while right. to get back to right. that place where you were at. Kind of yeah. So I do think yeah. that people need to be respectful of other people's times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You sure. know, I need to be respectful of what people are doing, mm-hmm. and they need to be respectful of what I'm doing. But mm-hmm. if somebody interrupts me with something that's really important, then that's a different right. story. Yeah. You're really good at being interrupted because I watch you. I'm watching you all the time. And so I sit by you. Our offices are near each other. But you are constantly you. being interrupted. Thank you. <laughs> it's scary. Yeah. <laughs> and and because pe- people need so much from you. And so mm-hmm. I, I watch you handle people trying to take your time in, in the kindest way. But you have to quickly be kind to them. And mm-hmm. it's just, that's hard. You do a really good job with it. Mm-hmm. And I watch and think, I don't know that I would be so graceful. Oh, thank you. That's people nice. people coming in all the time. Mm-hmm. It's not always what's happening on the inside. You hide it really <laughs> well. <laughs> I, I used to say when I had, I don't have to do this now because we've got a lot of other people, but when I used to run the yeah. office and yeah. everything, when I would come in here, I would have so many people Wanting a little mm-hmm. piece of me. Right. I always said by the end of the day, I felt like a bone that had been picked completely <laughs> clean. You know? There's was, nothing wow. left to give you. <laughs> wow. There's nothing left to give you. Yeah. And uh, uh, But we have to develop patience. But, yeah. you know, yeah. Jesus, We people always talk about studying the steps of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I think we need to study the stops of Jesus. Mm. Oh, that's, that's great. Because so he, yeah. yeah. He, he always let people stop yeah. him. I don't. Always. I don't know of a time when he said, "Don't bother mm, me." That's right. Mm-mm. He always uh, took time, absolutely, for people, and I think we need to remember yeah. that in our time. My daughter told me a story about something she did that I think just makes a good example. 
She was leaving the grocery store, and an elderly man was waiting at the curb to cross, and there was a lot of traffic, so they both had to wait a while. And he started talking to her, and she really was kind of in a hurry and wanted to get home, but she said, I kind of sensed in my heart Mm -hmm. that he really needed, that he was a lonely man, and he Mm -hmm. needed somebody just to take time to listen to him for a while. Mm -hmm. And so she said, I felt like God wanted me to do that. And see, these are ways that we can serve God Yeah, right. that maybe are not big, everybody's clapping for it, but heaven is clapping for it because that's that's what God wants. He wants us to pay attention to the little things that people need that we're maybe not going to get credit for here, but that are important to Him. Yeah. Well, the... The wonderful things that can come from interruption only come if we allow our heart to right. let it. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, otherwise we're we're pushing people away. We're even pushing God away and saying, mm-hmm. you know, I don't have time for that right, right. now. And we we are a culture that kind of has a do not disturb sign on right. us quite often. So mm-hmm. Joyce is going to tell us a little bit more about the danger of that do not disturb sign. So let's listen to that. And then we'll talk about being interrupted by God and by people and the good things that can come of it. Mm. I want to share with you a message tonight that is, it's been one that's been very important to me and something that has really helped me in my life. And I hope that it will help you. It has a funny little title. It's called Don't Disturb Me. You might be thinking, well, what in the world is that about? Well, you know, I think a large majority of people in the world today, that's just their attitude. I'm busy. I'm going somewhere. I've got my plan. I've got my thing. I've got my day figured out. And so if you've got a problem, don't bother me with it. Well, you know, Jesus wasn't like that. Now, we stay in a lot of hotels, and in hotels, they always leave us one of these to put on our door. But today, people are wearing them on their bodies. Now, I'll just wear this around for a little bit just so you get the picture. We have such a huge opportunity in front of us today. But we're going to have to get more like Jesus and a lot less like a carnal, selfish, self-centered Christian who just goes to church and thinks that's all there is to it. You know, just because you go to church, that doesn't make you a Christian. I could go home and sit in my garage all night and it wouldn't make me a car. Jesus said, I want you to go and bear fruit. So maybe I'd just like to ask you tonight to think a little bit this next week about what kind of fruit are you bearing in your life? Are you coming here and just being fed and you love that? You love for somebody else to do all the work and dig out all the messages and just feed you all the good stuff, but what are you doing with it? I hope a lot, I'm not accusing anybody. I hope that every message you hear, you hear it with the intent that you're going to do something with it. Now, we're going to use the parable of the Good Samaritan tonight, and I want you to listen to it like maybe you've never heard it before. There was a Pharisee, and he said to Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. And you shall love your neighbor even as you love yourself. I say those two scriptures out loud every morning because that's what God has called us to do is to love him and to love people. Amen. You know, one of the things that we find is that it's easy to love people when we're prepared for it, Mm -hmm. right? Right. When we're in the mood for it, when we have the time for it, whatever it may be. But God really does love to kind of jump in our path, Mm -hmm. to interrupt (laughs) us with the things that He wants, Mm -hmm, or to mm -hmm. interrupt us with another person, Mm -hmm. with a way that that God wants us to help them. And Mm -hmm. those are the hardest times sometimes. 
Well, I think sometimes we think that what we're doing is so important. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, you know, part of it when God interrupts us may just be a test. But I think a lot of times, too, is just we just we want everything to be convenient for us. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I don't mind doing that if, if I get to plan for it, but mm-hmm. don't, don't bug me with it mm-hmm. <laughs> right now. Yeah. I've got a definition here for convenient. Suited to personal comfort and ease. Mm-hmm. Suited to your own personal situation. And mm-hmm. I think we can pretty much say today that in our Western lifestyle, we're pretty much addicted to comfort yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. and ease. We don't, mm-hmm. we, we don't mind doing it, but I don't want it to be hard. I don't want it to be uncomfortable. I want it to be mm-hmm. on my timetable. And we do have to be ready to be interrupted if we're going to serve God. When you think about the disciples, that you, well, before they were disciples, they were fishermen. And mm-hmm. it's interesting to me that when Jesus said, follow me, they were all doing something. That's right. Yeah. Every one of them was busy That's doing right. something, mm-hmm. and they dropped everything yeah. mm-hmm. and followed him. Mm-hmm. And so I think there's a deeper message there mm-hmm. that we need to get for our lives. You know, is, right. is Jesus saying to some of the people that are watching today or listening today, follow me? But mm. you're too busy following your own plan yeah. mm-hmm. to really hear what God's saying. Mm-hmm. And let me just add before I be quiet and let somebody else talk, <laughs> is that you may think that the path you're taking is going to lead you to happiness, but there's no path that's better to follow than the one that God wants to take you down. Amen. That's really yeah. Amen. I was just reading Luke 1 the other day, and then I was talking to some people about it yesterday, and that the story of Mary and mm-hmm. Angel Gabriel comes to Mary and he says you're going to have a baby. <laughs> so first of all, whoa, that's a, that's kind of big. <laughs> and then he's going to be the savior of the world. Mm-hmm. And so I'm reading this passage and she asks one question. She's like, "How is that possible?" Which feels like a fair question to ask because Especially she's engaged. She's about fourteen. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she's engaged to be married, not not yet married, right. and she's pure. And so that feels fair, but that's the only thing she says. And then she says, okay, I, she accepts that and she's ready to go. And I thought, I don't know that I would, no, I don't yeah. know it. I know that I would not have responded. Yeah. Maybe if an angel appeared to you. This is true. Okay, it fair. Does help. That's, yeah. that's, that's kind of true. That yeah. brings it <laughs> into perspective. Guy. That does. <laughs> that might have put a little instant fear of God. Right. In, uh, right. right. Okay. 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 Sure. A sure. glowing guy with wings <laughs> tells me I might, yeah. I might be persuaded right. a little that's more a good than point. I yeah. would But then in the she natural. goes to Elizabeth and she is... Like she's just all in on right. this, and God has totally changed the plans He had for her because before the angel came, she was engaged. She was going to have this life that she has planned ahead right. of her, and now it, the whole thing spins, and she's in mm-hmm. in to go. And I thought, I want to be like that. I want to be that right. interruptible. Well, when you think yeah. about it, all the heroes, the big people we read about, Abraham, Joseph, mm-hmm. Esther, Ruth, yeah. Saul, right. they, Saul, right. I mean, yeah. they all— had other plans Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. for their life. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, God comes to Abraham and says, walk away from everything that you know mm-hmm. and go to a place that I will show you right. mm-hmm. after you go. Right. Well, most of mm-hmm. us would say, show me, and if I like it, I'll go. That's exactly <laughs> yeah. right. And, uh, but he, what a test of faith. You, yeah. mm-hmm. you go, leave everything. Mm-hmm. And yeah. why did Abraham have to leave everything? Because his family were idol worshipers. Right. And God had to right. get him away from that influence. Yeah. yeah, right. And sometimes, you know, God might be asking you to leave a group of friends you have or, or, yeah, or leave a job stuff. you have. Right. And it's, mm-hmm. we, we don't want to leave the places where right. we're comfortable, but mm-hmm. right. sometimes you got to leave to get to the place where That's God right. really wants you to be. I, I think it goes back to, I love that you started with that definition of, co- of comfort and convenience, because in my own tiny little world, it's been in the places where he has rocked me out of mm-hmm. a comfort zone mm-hmm. that I'm actually most alert because I'm kind yeah. of thrown. I don't have my bearings, right. mm-hmm. and I need his voice. I can't I can't step without breaking my ankle yeah. if he doesn't tell me where to step. Right. So I think some of it is his kindness going, I know if you stay in that place where you figured it out, you're going to be less likely to turn to me for direction. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to basically mess things up so you can't walk out your your plan because if you walk out your plan, you're not going to walk in right. the plan. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, I must okay. be one of those people that God really has to jump in front of. <laughs> he does of. that a lot to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, I just must be one of those that he knows I'm I'm going to have to make it big and obvious for right. this one because she's right. she's not real quick at the right. take up sometimes. Well, I was going to say amen to that. Then. We had to offer her a job here four times before she finally accepted it. <laughs> that is a great example. Yeah, it's it's just almost all the major things in my life, I had a different thing mm-hmm. going on. Yep. I, Tim and I were not going to have children because, right. you know, I just knew that that's not what God had for me. Right. I, and that that just changed like mm. one day when when God basically, I thought I was pregnant and found out I wasn't and just had such disappointment that shocked me. Hmm. And it was God saying, you, you see, if you open your heart to some of the things you think you don't want. Wow. And and the same thing with, with getting married. I, I didn't think I'd want to get married. And <laughs> Were you going to be an Amy Carmichael? Boy, then, you, you were going <laughs> to be one. Kind of, I, I really had other ways that I thought God wanted me to right. do what He wanted. Right. You know, I would take care of children in other ways. So sure. you're right. Sure. It was always following God, but it was following God my way sure. and not That's God's good. way. Or maybe the way it had been modeled to you. I had that I have to yeah. go. Especially as a woman, you were, are such a trailblazer, but I thought, I'm a conservative stranger in the church. The only way I can work for God is to be a missionary in Africa. Yeah. I, I didn't know there was another way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So God has to jump in front mm-hmm. of a lot of us to just kind of stop us in our tracks right. and show us mm-hmm. that my my plan for you is different, but it's mm-hmm. good and it's so much and better. better. Better than anything you could do. Yes, yeah, so yeah. much better. Well, yeah. instead of planning and then praying that God will make our plan work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We need to pray first and find out what God's plan is. When Wait, we offered, Ms. Joyce, it's wrong the other way. <laughs> <laughs> when we offered Ginger a job, she said no. Second time we offered her a job, she said no. Third time, she said no. And then you said no. And the fourth time, <laughs> the fourth time, she, her and her husband said, well, maybe we should pray about this. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It took us that long. <laughs> And that was 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when we did it, we, we kind of told God, how about three to five years? Yeah. yeah. And I then, love that you told him your timetable. <laughs> he listened so well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like obedience in moderation. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's awesome. Obedience in moderation. But you when know you that find thought, out the goodness of God. Yeah. That'll preach. Yeah, that's a good yeah. One. When you find out the goodness of God and what he has for you and how it's so much better than you ever knew, right. then it, it changes right. your plan and it changes who you are. And yeah. at least I know this has been something that's kind of been on your mind as well mm-hmm. as about being interrupted by other people to be there for what they need. Oh, 100%. I was sitting in a class a couple of years ago and was just lambasted because our professor said Jesus' ministry took place at three miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And you think, what? And he said he walked everywhere he went. Mm -hmm. And then he said, how interruptible are you? And I'm a planner. I'm yeah. a I'm a get it done, and and some of it is personality, and some of it is gifting, and some of it has been sin. Because when I was growing up, my I, I kind of balanced my worth and my work. I thought if I'm not productive, God has already lowered the bar to let me into the kingdom, and so I've got to just keep my head down and be a good girl. Um, I could I could talk about grace, but I just. I really didn't think God liked me very much. Mm. I knew he had to save me because it was in his job description, but I already <laughs> felt so dirty. You know, by the time I gave my heart to Jesus, I just thought I better behave. And so I've always been a worker bee. It's hard for me to—I'm much more Martha than Mary, stereotypically. But when this professor said that, I thought, oh, my goodness, here I am in my late 50s. By the grace of God, I get to talk about Jesus for a living I, I think I'm running too fast. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I'm just racing right past miracles. And I mm-hmm. did a deep dive into what Joyce has preached so beautifully so many times into how interruptible Jesus is. And a couple of the passages, you know, Mark 10, Bartimaeus, Jesus is on his way to Easter. <laughs> He's made the turn. He's headed to Jerusalem. And there's a blind guy. It says the crowd tells him to shut up. Mm-hmm. And the word there, epitomio in, Gre- in Greek says, basically it means you better hush up or we'll hush you up. Mm-hmm. I always say every parent has epitomio you know, when you aim the roof <laughs> <you> mirror <laughs> so that you can yeah. smack their knee. Um, the, so the crowd didn't just say, you know, Bartimaeus, 
hush. Mm -hmm. They said, if you don't hush, we'll hush you up. Jesus is passing by, a crowd is formed, not because they trusted him as Messiah, but because they wanted to see if he did tricks. They had gotten the, you know, old-fashioned Facebook forwards that Mm -hmm. wherever he went, paralytics did cartwheels. So this crowd is formed. He's on his way to Jerusalem, to the cross. It's it's the very last time he stops before that week of passion. And Bartimaeus in their culture, because he's blind, he's completely ostracized because it was assumed in, in the first century, if you had an ongoing medical condition, you had unconfessed sin. Mm-hmm. And so Bart is, one uh, commentator says he's basically sitting on the curb. It says he's away from the crowd, but he hears Jesus is passing by. Obviously, he doesn't see him. He's blind. And he starts hollering, Son of David, have mercy on me. Obviously, he believes the prophecies that Jesus would come through the lineage of David. So that's kind of like his profession of faith. But Jesus is on his way to Easter. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And the crowd tries to hush him up. Bart keeps hollering. And truly, one of my favorite verses and the entire gospel of Mark is there at the beginning of verse, verse 41 in Mark chapter 10. It says, and Jesus stopped. Right. And Jesus stopped. Yeah. And, of course, he goes on to heal Bartimaeus, and then it says Bartimaeus followed him along the way. Mm-hmm. He's counted among the, the early Christians who started the church. But you go, Jesus puts Easter on pause mm-hmm. for this one man Nobody else will give the time of day to. As a matter of fact, they threaten to beat him up if he doesn't shut up. (laughs) And you get their story after story after story of the king of all kings would set aside his agenda or were people his agenda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he always put people over protocol. Were people his agenda. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. I found when when we go into other countries— to see our hand of hope outreaches, yeah. and by the way, Joyce, thank you for being so persistent oh. and continuing to ask me oh, because it's goodness. been such such a joy and a pleasure. But we, we're working really hard. We don't have a lot of time, and right. we're trying to get a lot done. Mm-hmm. And we ha- we have a definite agenda and a lot right. to do. And one of my very very favorite things is to be interrupted by the kids. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. It just it makes me so happy. Yeah. Because they have such need and they right. have such hardships in their life and yeah. we're very busy so ev- <laughs> everyone's running and doing right. their thing and then someone will just come up and like grab my leg or mm-hmm. you know pull on my shirt and you look down and you have a friend for life. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean they so often in at these times I'll have a, a, at least one if not several that are just kind of my my sidekick for the rest right, of the time. Your Velcro kids. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's the most wonderful thing. Right. And it would be so easy mm-hmm. to just keep doing what we know we need to do right. and pat them on the head and mm-hmm. go on. Right. Because that's our job. That's the ministry. Right. That's what's supposed to be happening. But w- I would miss out on such joy. Right. Yeah. It's not. It's not about what we're giving them. It's, right. it's so often about what they're giving 100%. us. Yeah. Yeah. So those interruptions that you think are an inconvenience sometimes are the greatest things that can ever happen. Are so holy. When you're modeling Jesus, I love that even the disciples told the kids. I always imagine that story, Miss Joyce, because I like to put things in modern context because they are real stories. Mm -hmm. So if they were to happen today, what would it look like? And so I always imagine Jesus and the disciples in the the food court of the mall, you know, (laughs) (laughs) and Jesus and the disciples. I mean, the disciples have gone down to, you know, Sears, if they even have Sears anymore, to get some camping equipment and, and, you know— Peter and Jesus are standing in front of Chick-fil-A because it's a Christian company yeah. and they're about to order. And these little kids, their moms are homeschool moms. And and so they're in comas. They just have gone to the mall for a lesson on capitalism because they're so tired of these children. <laughs> and the, the little boys are over here, you know, table. They're, you know, eating sugar. And one of them recognizes Jesus. And they make a beeline for Jesus. And Peter, one of the three closest, Jesus says, no, 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 no. Y'all hold up. Y'all are all sticky. You got apple pie goo on your shirt. <laughs> you can go to the bathroom, clean yourselves up. Yeah. Then when you come back here, you form a single file <laughs> line. <laughs> and Jesus says, no, yeah. Pete, you let them pass. Mm-hmm. And those kids just launch themselves, messy, sticky mm-hmm. kids, mm-hmm. 
into the lap of the Messiah, and you go, my goodness. And of course, there's we have to get our work done. If you're at a right. at a conference, you have to make it to teach to the 20,000 people who are there. You can't talk to every single person. No. But I've seen you, Miss Joyce, over and over again make time for people and for that one person. If I, I have so many stories of people who go, oh, you know, Joyce Meyer, and I'm like— well, not real well, but I sure do like her. <laughs> and, and they'll say one time, and then they'll go back to a date 20 years ago. She looked me in the eyes. I'd watched her on television for years. She's shaped my walk with Jesus. But she said, hello, and how are you doing? And that moment for them, you, you, you were Jesus with skin on because you stopped and you said, you matter. And we're supposed always to do. <laughs> well, you that. do as much as you can. Yeah. Yeah. You do as often as you can, and I just, I have to tell myself sometimes, it's always people over program. It's always people over protocol. It's always people, people. And we do have to keep reminding ourselves Mm -hmm. of that. You know, when we first started going out of the country, I remember especially in Africa, Mm -hmm. you know, I went, I had an agenda. I had... Mm -hmm. You had a big agenda. Yeah, I had so many things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I felt like... When they put the trips together, then they were going to get every ounce out of me that they could. Right. And uh, I had to learn that people in a lot of these other countries, they are much more relationship-oriented than they are work-oriented. Right. Mm-hmm. And it was offensive to them if we did not take the time right. to eat with them, to right. see their cultural dance, to— Listen to the songs that the kids had prepared. Right. And, you know, in the beginning, I was like all antsy inside. It's like, I, I got to get to work. I'm not gonna- <laughs> Talking about interruption, how many times have we heard just, just five more songs? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. just five more songs, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, five. <laughs> five more songs. After you've eaten mystery meat. And you're, yeah, you're mystery meat, yeah. 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 And, uh, but God really, it really bothers him when we mistreat people. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. I had to I had to really learn that that it Mm -hmm. it bothers him when we mistreat people. And one of the best stories is the story of the Good Samaritan. Mm -hmm. Because you have Mm -hmm. you have this man lying on the side of the road that had been beaten up and was bleeding. And two religious people, right, a priest and a Levi, saw him and crossed over to the other side That's of the street right. so they didn't have to mm-hmm. really see him. That's right. And wonder how many times we've crossed over to the other side That's so right. we don't really have to face it. Yeah. But then the Samaritan comes along who's not even really on page with them religiously. Right. But he was going somewhere. Right. But he stopped, bandaged his wounds, put him on his horse, took him to an inn, and the thing that I love, he couldn't stay. He had to go somewhere, but he said, you take care of him till I get back, and I'll pay you That's right. whatever it costs. He didn't put any limits on what he would spend. Right. I love that. I, yeah. That, to me, is one of the most interesting. Oh, I love you it. Know, he said, I, I'll, I'll, whatever, whatever it costs, right. I'll pay it. I wonder what our lives would be like if our attitude was, mm-hmm. Lord, mm-hmm. I want to follow you, whatever it costs. It doesn't matter. Right, yeah. And Luke, I love Luke's context because he's the only one who tells that story. And Luke, he's the only Gentile author of Scripture that we know of, so he's an outsider. He's not considered clean mm-hmm. because he's a Gentile. I love that he makes the Samaritan the hero because mm-hmm. the Samaritans were you know, considered dirty half-breeds right. when you yes. go back to Assyria and the Jews and all the stuff. And I could see him making the Samaritan the guy in the ditch yeah. who needed our help. But instead, he makes him the hero. And the priest and Levite, they're coming home from temple. Yeah. They don't have to keep themselves clean. They're going to the suburbs. They could have helped the guy yeah. because they didn't have to stay ceremonially pure because they're not going to temple. Mm-hmm. They're headed home on you know, some R&R. Every, every facet of that story just screams, people matter, people matter, yeah. people matter. Status doesn't. Mm-hmm. you know, Ethnicity doesn't. Sociodemographics don't. People matter. Yeah. See people, and I think some of us, I think, are just going to have our hair blown back when we get to glory. <laughs> we're in the mm-hmm. 
subsidized apartments at the people who are in the mansions. Yeah. I, and I know that's not theologically sound. We're all going <laughs> to have the same house. Not theologically but, sound. But I'm like, I love the way God doesn't just show compassion for the least of these. Yeah. He makes some of the heroes mm-hmm. in the story. And I'm like, man, we miss mm-hmm. it the way we have hierarchy. And we we see people as interruptions instead of as as. You know, so and how many yeah. people put their religiosity yeah. mm-hmm. above just dealing with mm-hmm. the hurting and the yeah yeah yeah. I have to say this too. I mean, I just have, I have tears in my eyes to think of like sitting with the three of you. I'll try to do my best to not sob through mm-hmm. saying this to you, but like you could, you are Joyce Meyer. Mm-hmm. And you have taught around the world, mm-hmm. but you will help anybody who needs help. Mm-hmm. And you will, if God puts a people group on your heart, you'll go to the ends of the earth to help them. You, God puts foster care on your heart, you're going to make a change. And you see people that none of the rest of us sometimes stop to see. And the two of you, I mean, I've just, to be around these amazing women who you guys, you have positions that you could feel really confident in yourselves and you're the most genuine, humble people that I've ever met. Yeah, and well, it took a while. <laughs> the, the way that God, I mean, God is using you. God had to you. deal with me pretty strong, firmly, to get me to the point where I'm at. And mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I, when I got it through my head that it is the most important thing to God, and, you know, my relationship with Him is how mm-hmm. I treat people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where we show... 100%. Our love for God, because He so said, beautiful. "If you've yeah. done it under the least of these, That's my right. brethren, you've done it under That's the right. least." That's yeah. right. And if you have not, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, that's really that's, right. that's one of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible to think about. Is. Is he, yeah. he basically is how you treat people is how you're treating me. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. so, yeah, I, I have the reverential fear of God on me right. about mistreating people. And what is ministry about? It's about meeting needs. Yeah, yeah that's right. It's not about being famous or well known uh-huh. or and we're all in ministry, you know, th- right? Yeah, oh, thinking yeah. you're a big I, shot I because you're on television. You know, yeah, the, yeah. I would be nowhere if God didn't put me there. That's right. And I certainly couldn't keep myself there. And so I appreciate the yeah. compliment, but I have to give it well, back to God. The tears, <laughs> Joyce. It just made me yeah. so emotional for a second. Yeah. But but what it does to to me, I'm a mom with a couple kids at home, yeah. and I think those are my people. So Absolutely. I need to let myself be interruptible for those two kids. Yeah. I am, mom is working right now. I'm doing things for Jesus, so don't yeah, talk right. to me. <laughs> yeah. I am working for the Lord. But mom, I need, I had a really hard day at school. I need you to right. stop and talk to right. me. So I need to, I need to take these lessons and apply them to my life as a mom yeah. at home and oh, be yeah. interruptible. All of us do. Oh, I can tell you a funny story. I was going to preach one night and we got stopped by a train. And it was a long train. I bet you enjoyed and it. And I was going, <laughs> it looked like I was going to be late. And I, there's nothing I dislike worse than being late when I'm supposed to preach. I just right. can't, can't stand that. I right. really like to be on time. And so the train passes and we get a little ways down. And then Dave stops to let a couple of people into the line of traffic, and I said, we don't have time. We, he, I said, we got to go. I'm time for that. He said, well, I'm just trying to be nice. I said, I don't have the time to be nice. I'm trying to get to church. <laughs> and then, of course, awesome. I had to tell on myself at church. But I, was like, awesome. I don't have time to be nice right now. I've got to get to church. Yeah. That's the way we are sometimes. But, it, but it's yeah. our culture. It's also yeah, first it is, world culture. Yeah. It's, it's produce, 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 produce. Um, one of the best things, because I get a lot of gentle spankings from the Lord because I'm such Glad a slow yours are gentle. Well, I was trying to be polite. Some of them really walloped me. But um, the first time I went to, um, to meet Missy in Haiti, uh, my daughter who had got through the miracle of adoption, um, I, I just couldn't stop hugging people. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know how contagious scabies was. Um, in third world countries, basically full body lice. And I was itching a lot, but it was hot. And <laughs> I was in menopause. I was always hot or itchy or something anyway. <laughs> well, anyway, I had to go straight from Haiti to speak at a conference. I won't say where it was because there's still people there that are mad at me. But <laughs> I go to this conference. And, and like three days in the conference, I just had this, you know how sometimes you'll be 
talking or sharing with a group of people, and you'll have like the balloon over your head, like you'll think, well, that's just curious. And you're thinking something <laughs> that is not coming out of your mouth. And I thought, that is the weirdest thing that all these women are itching. And I went, oh, oh no. Oh. I, I, had, oh. I had given this entire <laughs> conference <laughs> this, this yeah, I mean, sharing the love. Get, it, yeah. get this Generous. stuff called permethrin from Walmart, Walgreens. It's not a big deal. You get rid of it. You just have to burn your clothes. But anyway, as I'm leaving, and I had, they had to race me to the plane. I was about to miss my flight. I'm telling the guy who runs the whole thing, and he was new, and he was trying to, like, make everything all nice. And I said, I've given all the women here scabies. <laughs> and I said, and he thought I was teasing him. And I said, oh, no, sir, I'm not playing. I said, here's what you need to get. It's some and sort of spiritual thing, thing, right? And he was like, <laughs> he looked at me like, you nut job. You have just infected. I was like, I'm oh. so sorry. I didn't mean to. But I, it was so good for me because God <laughs> was like, so your baby goes through this every day. Mm-hmm. Every day, millions of people around yeah. the world are hungry and they itch. You get a prescription at Walgreens and it'll be over in a yeah, week. Right. It is good for you to remember yeah. Wow. People and I thought I, I'm gonna have to make a little sermon about why we all need yeah, scabies every yeah. now and then because it just makes you more <laughs> compassionate. It, yeah, absolutely. You know? And your life was majorly interrupted yeah. when God brought you this beautiful little girl yeah. and said things are gonna change right. now. Oh, yeah, dramatically. I had I was telling somebody recently. I, I became a mom at the age of fifty through the miracle of adoption. I lost two babies before Missy, and I'm. Honestly, not sure I would have been brave enough because I had everything kind of planned. Mm-hmm. And losing the second child just four days before I was supposed to bring her home, it mm-hmm. just wrecked me. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking if he didn't allow my heart to be so eviscerated, I don't know if I'd be brave enough to give it away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it was kind of already in pieces. Mm-hmm. And it took two years. Missy almost died a couple of times during the adoption process. Mm-hmm. But somewhere in my stubborn, crooked heart, I thought once I brought her home, it would be easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And I mean, I've never been so tired. And I had to call <laughs> friends of mine because I thought, I'm single. You know, How old I'm was she when smart. you got her? She, I brought her home. At, she was four and a half. She was two and a half when I started the process right after her first mama died. And uh, you know, she didn't speak a lick of English. She was real sick. And uh, I, and still, I had everything organized. You know, I had bins you with had bins. signs on the bins. <laughs> yeah, I mean, bins. man, we are going to knock this puppy out. And and uh, <laughs> as a matter of fact, Christmas always reminds me of our first Christmas together. Missy got real sick during the night, so I pulled her into into my bed. This is way TMI for a Christian podcast, but uh, <laughs> go for it. That's what I, we listen, are all about. Joyce is my spiritual mentor. I'm just going to yeah. be honest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I put her in my bed because she had a fever. And uh, because of some of Missy's medical conditions, if she gets sick, it can be pretty serious. Yeah. And so, you know, in the middle of the night, just the antenna, your mama antenna will go yeah. off. And I woke up and I just stuck my hand over on her forehead to see if it was mm-hmm. hot. And it was wet. And I'm, you know, you're reeling for the light because I'm thinking it's a fever. And as I'm going to turn on the light, my nose said, that's not fever. And she had gotten really sick out of both ends. <laughs> and it was it was on the wall. It was, I mean, it was everywhere in her hair, in my hair. And I was like, ah! Oh, ah! My God. I was speaking, Miss Joyce, Chris, Chris Kane was coming to town. And we were doing this big, like fancy Christmas extravaganza <laughs> that extravaganza. morning. And so it's We've 3 o'clock in the morning, and, and oh, my shit. heavens, I am cleaning horrible stuff off the walls out of thing. <laughs> I lived in the stuff. country. I just took my bedding and <laughs> threw it out in the grass. I thought, I'll deal with it later. Can't even deal with that now. Well, I get to this. Of course, I hadn't slept. I, by the, I haven't slept a wink. I'm just, I'm driving this thing to speak about, you know, the wonder of Advent. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I get there, and there's a friend of mine there has six kids, and she said, well, well, you, you seem a little tired. I was like, I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, well, what were you doing? I said, well, I was cleaning poo-poo out of my child's braids. <laughs> and she said, well, Lisa, 
you've never had an episiotomy, but you know what it is to be a mother now. <laughs> <laughs> but it was that this is what being a mom is. Yeah. This is what being a spiritual mother is. Mm-hmm. It's messy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's all about people. And it doesn't yeah. matter if, you're, if your sermon rhymes. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how many followers. It matters how well you love the people God allows you to yeah. rub shoulders with. That's yeah. the gospel. He made himself nothing. Mm-hmm. to be made in human form, to love us, wrap mm-hmm. things like us, we could at least do some measure of that same kindness toward And we have to remind ourselves of this yeah. all the time, over yeah. and over and over. I preach about this a lot, and if nothing else, I preach it for me, because we are so naturally selfish mm-hmm. and self-centered mm-hmm. that we really, it, it's something that you have to keep in front of you. Yeah. It it's is, something it you is, have to... Yeah. Do on purpose. Mm -hmm. There's some things you may do accidentally, but this is something you have to do on purpose. I love that it's on the building, Miss Joyce, (laughs) that you drive up and you see love God, love people. You know, the body of Christ is a metaphor. It's what we were made for. I love that your ministry, your ministry just, that is your ministry. It's it's your heart. I, I love that y'all love people so well for you the know, sake of it, Christ. Like you were saying, it does not come naturally to most no. of us. I mean, mm-hmm. Aaron, your your words were so kind, and and I think about the way that God has to jump out in front of us to teach mm-hmm. us yeah. these things. And one of the things that has really helped me learn so much is is just about how this is all about surrender Mm -hmm. because you know we want to hold on to the things we want to hold on to we got to let go of things to love people well and the other is humility yes because when i think that i'm too good absolutely to stop to stoop down to do whatever it may be and nobody nobody thinks that on the outside but that is the answer Mm -hmm. you know if i don't do it it's because i think i'm more important than they Mm -hmm. are Absolutely. And so when God gives you that revelation, mm-hmm. right? And wow, to talk about the love that comes out of that mm-hmm. because you realize I'm nothing. Mm-hmm. I am nothing. And so you you have to kind of walk in that and build it and develop it all mm-hmm. the time and and mess it up and start all over right. and do yeah. it again. And I right. I think about you, Aaron, and so many others and where where we've been as as a as a young mom trying to do that with yeah. kids every day. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is living in surrender. That yes. that is walking in humility and yes. loving people all the time. So, what encouragement would you have for young moms who are doing mm-hmm. this now? Well, because I, I know you got it. <laughs> Let me tell you. Well, actually, pray a lot. yeah, we pray a lot. <laughs> so we sometimes we just cry, and it's okay. Right. Actually, what comes to my mind when you say that is in areas where I've struggled with. This feels super off topic, but when I've struggled with anxiety. It's because I'm being interrupted usually by my kids. I don't mm. want to miss this thing because my kid might throw up in the night and I'll have to clean it up right. off the wall or whatever right. it might be. And God has shown me so many times that's not the point. The right. point is that kid is the one who needs you that's in that right. moment. And they are not an interruption to your life. They're the reason that that's their right. life is in your hands right now. I'm trusting yeah. them with you. So it it is humbling myself and reminding myself these are gifts and they're mm. not an annoyance, mm. sometimes. <laughs> but they're not an interruption. They're the point. They're yeah. the point, they're the point they're of the why I'm thing. here. Right. And God will God will sort out the rest of it. I just do the best I can, but they, that is the point. And I think to bring it in balance, because mm-hmm. there's always a balance, yeah. this mm-hmm. does not mean that everybody who wants to interrupt you Right. You should always stop. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. And just do what everybody wants right. you to yeah. do, even your kids. Sure. Because, I was going to ask you about boundaries. Uh, yeah. That. So, you know, we have, we have to, we do have a mandate from God of what right. He wants us to get done. And right. the devil will use mm-hmm. well meaning but unsuspecting people sure. to derail you sure. and get you off track. Mm-hmm. So you have to. I have to listen to the Holy Spirit in right. this too and know when right. when to say yes and when to say no. It's like we were talking in another podcast about the whole of Scripture. Mm-hmm. Because when you said that, I thought, remember mm-hmm. Nehemiah and the wall? And he had to go, no, I'm not coming off the wall. Right. And there were some legitimate people right. saying, well, yeah. come do this. And he said, nope, nope, this is my main purpose right now. I love that you use the word stoop. It's one of my favorite ways um, to think about Jesus, mm-hmm. the King of all kings, 
the Messiah, perfectly holy, perfectly transcendent, condescends. And I, I think of him at that, you know, at the Passover, when he stooped and took on the form of a servant, wrapped a towel on his waist, and washed their nasty feet. They walked mm-hmm. everywhere they went. Yeah. They've got grimy feet. And he washes their feet. And I think, this is one of those conundrums, I think, did he know that when he laid down his scepter in glory, that he'd be picking up a mm-hmm. towel and washing our nasty feet? And yet he said, this is, I didn't come to be yeah. served. I came yeah. to serve and give my life as a ransom for many. And so sometimes I, I'm i not wise enough to know when I stay on the wall and when I stoop. But I'm gonna, if I'm going to err, mm-hmm. I'd like yeah. people to be my mistake. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. You know, there's a scripture that I want to share before our time's up today. This taught me a lot, and it, it, I think it's a good lesson. You know, when you think of Sodom and Gomorrah mm-hmm. and God destroyed them, and we usually think it was because of sexual sin. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but this is what Ezekiel 1649 says. Behold, this was the guilt of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters had pride, Mm -hmm. excess of food, Mm -hmm. and prosperous ease, and they did not aid the poor and the needy. Mm. Wow. And that was what destroyed them. It it wasn't, not that the sexual sin was right, Right. but that wasn't really why they were destroyed. Matter of fact, these other things may have led them into the and sexual I, I sin. Probably did, right. Probably did. And so they chose idleness, ease, convenience, and selfishness. Wow. And that was what brought about In the destruction. In other words, they didn't love people. And, yeah, they didn't love people. And so if we're going to call ourselves Christians. Mm. Man, that's good. Then we have to make loving people a priority. Yeah. Right. Because I think that the way we love other people is the way we love Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, this has been such great encouragement. And it's not easy stuff. I mean, this no. this is hard stuff. Yeah. Knowing the boundaries mm-hmm. and just letting ourselves be be paused when we don't want to. I yeah. mean, it's difficult, but there there are such opportunities in it. I mean, yeah. God wants to do so much in our life, so much more than we can even imagine. Yeah. Yeah. If I can just slow down enough now and then to say, okay, God, I'm here, I'm ready, do what you will, mm-hmm. whether it's through somebody else or just something He wants to right. drop in my lap to bless us. Yeah. So here's a scripture as we walk it out, something to mm-hmm. remember. This is Ephesians 4, 2. It says, with all humility mm-hmm. and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. Mm-hmm. Those are key words, and they are not easy ones. But with God's yeah. help, all things are possible. Amen. Thank you, Lisa. It's always so fun having you here. Great conversation, you guys. Thank Thank you. you. Good day. And we will see you all next time. Bye-bye.